It might be ugly, but at least it's slow. Hello, my friends, and welcome to Tom's Tinkering and Adventures. Today we're going to work on this little Chinese 50cc scooter. A friend of mine ended up purchasing two of these scooters a while back. I don't know, maybe about a year ago or so. He got two scooters, this one and another one, off of uh, Offer Up because his wife was interested in riding and uh, he didn't want to spend a lot of money because he wasn't certain if she was really going to be into it. So we got them both going. We sold the other one for basically what we paid for the two of them. And then his wife rode this one maybe two or three times. And of course she decided that riding wasn't for her. And now this thing has been sitting. So we're gonna get it running again and see if we can't get a couple bucks for it. I think uh, the plan was to see what we could get out of it and uh, go out and eat some buffet or something with the money. So we're not planning on getting a lot, but it ought to be fun to try to get it running again. I imagine it's going to be the usual fun stuff that we do here in Tom's Tinkering and Adventures Garage, which will uh, involve removing carburetor and charging a battery. We already know that it does run, so we'll just go over the steps on it and try to clean it up a little bit as well. Um, of course, she didn't uh, treat it the best because she'd never ridden before, so it got tipped over a couple times, and I think he said he backed it into something and broke this tail light. I'll see if I have something to put on there to make that look a little bit better, but uh, all said and done, this thing isn't worth a whole heck of a lot of money, but it ought to be fun to get it running. So let's get it off of here. I have a busy day, a couple people I gotta help out today, so let's see if we can't finish this before I head out. I don't remember everything that we had to go through to get this thing going, but I know out of the two that we bought, this one was the most kind of beat up actually. The other one was rusty and uh, broken plastic, but this one had a lot of weird stuff on it. And um, from what I remember, uh, all the ignition and stuff was messed up. You can see the, the key just kind of is something that fits in here. And I know that you're supposed to pull in the uh, brake to be able to engage the starter and I can't remember if it was this one or the other one that had something wrong with that on it that it didn't work. And uh, of course, none of the lights seem to be working. We do have, or we had, there we go. <laughs> we do have juice. I remember putting a brand new battery in here. And this one has a, let me see if I can clean this off. We can see it. You can see the battery needs to be charged but it's showing enough voltage where we should get something. And uh, even pulling in the brake, I don't get anything with the electric start. So I'm gonna pull this uh, plastic, some of it off anyway, and see if we can get down to the starter and see if we can't just bypass and jump across the starter. I haven't done anything yet to the carburetor, but we'll just see what the heck, let's see what happens. I know it's been sitting for at least probably six months without running. So I don't anticipate it's gonna start, but maybe we'll get lucky. Okay, so I just decided to take all this back plastic off of here. I'm not sure if that uh, starter switch, if it has to close the circuit through this tail light circuit before it'll energize that um, starter circuit. That's something I'll just have to troubleshoot later and figure out. I just wanna see if we can get this thing running for now. So I've set the battery over here, hooked it up. Uh, added some juice from the battery charger here. Um, I pulled the air filter off of the carburetor. Let's spray a little bit of starting juice in there. And then I have put a alligator clip directly to the starter lead. And then to bypass everything, I'm just gonna hit it right on the uh, positive here. Yeah, this is some good redneck stuff here. And let's see. I know that our key is on because you can see that we've got that and we've got the horn. We still don't have anything from the starter button here. Let's see what happens. Actually, here, let me set you up here so that I can operate the throttle in case we get anything happening here. This is some 
ghetto shit, but it might work. Holy smokes. something. Try it again. Probably hellaciously dangerous, ladies and gentlemen. can't believe we got anything to happen. Mm, well, that's just, uh, I was worried that was electrical smoke. <laughs> One more go round. Sounds like the carburetor is going to have to come off. Amazing. All right. Well, this carburetor is easy to take off, so we'll get this off of here. Just to add in that throttle cable. A lot of these scooters have this uh, electric choke. They call it a uh, bypass, I think they call it. I can't remember the name of it. Bypass valve or bypasser or something. So what that does is when it heats up, there's a spring in there that forces a needle down. And then when it heats up, it retracts it or vice versa. I forget exactly how it works. But sometimes those are a pain in the ass. We'll get that off, and then I'm going to have to figure out how to um, get rid of the circuit for the starter here so that we can just go straight from here on down. I'm sure that's uh, some wiring mess over here. I did a little bit of troubleshooting. I went up here at the uh, front, removed some of that stuff, and tested that brake light switch. And then uh, using the multimeter, I figured out where the leads went for this brake light and I just jammed a, you'll see it here in a second, hopefully you can see that. I just jammed a little instrument cluster light in there so we know the brake light switch is working but uh, all that doesn't really mean a whole heck of a lot because I also figured out where the um, electric starter switch goes up here. I'm going to test for continuity on that. Make sure that the switch is working. So hopefully I can do all this with. I'm touching the contacts. Oops, those are just touching those two together. And let's try and get this to work in here. It's not very easy. Uh, anyway, is that the right one? There you go. So I'm holding the leads in here and pressing the start button. Oh. And when you press the start button, the leads are making contact. So then I plug that back in and remove the, this doesn't really have a uh, starter solenoid. It's a relay. So it's a little bit lighter duty. So I've removed the relay. This is where the two start buttons go, which makes contact on this relay, which should then cross from the positive off the battery down to the starter. You can see that that's working. 
And then when I put this back in uh, the correct way, there we go. No go. But if I use a little jumper wire here, use red, and then cross over to the other red, it's working. That leads me to suspect that our relay is bad. So what I'm going to do next is I am going to see if I can't take this relay apart. Usually you're not supposed to, but I don't want to spend a lot of money on this thing. So let's see if we can take this relay apart. The fact that this thing ran at all is pretty interesting. Look at this. This is the stuff that come out of the uh, inlet tube there. And that's what the bottom of the float bowl look like. And that's what the top of the accelerator pump looks like. And in there you can see that kind of goopy soup in there. So I've got it mostly disassembled. I'm gonna pull the, this is the main jet and the pilot jet, I'll remove those. And I'll throw it in the ultrasonic. And uh, I'll grab the relay and we can see what we can figure out with that. Okay, now onto our relay. If you're not familiar with what a relay is, it's a uh, way to control one circuit by uh, using another one, and it uses an electromagnet, basically. So what we have is, uh, let's say, and I'm not sure which poles are which, but this would be the lead straight from the battery, and this is the lead down to the starter. So this one has energy to it, and then these two are the contacts between the starter switch. So when you close these two, it closes a circuit inside of here, which causes an electromagnet to close, which then closes this circuit, sending the power from the battery to the starter. And then when you let off the starter button, that opens that up. There you have it. So these things are generally not made to be uh, user serviceable. Let me zoom in here a little bit, my dirty fingers. And uh, they're really not that expensive, but since this is just kind of a junky um, scooter here, we don't really want to spend too much money on it. It's not going to sell for a lot of money, and we just want to basically go to the China Buffet or something here. So we just want to mess around. And this is also a good learning experience. Looking at the inside of one of these, uh, this would be the kind of thing like maybe if you were stuck somewhere you might have to do. Um, and this one's got a little bit of sealant or something around it, some glue. So I'm going to pick away at that, but you can, hopefully you can see um, right there. It's kind of popping open a little bit. Some of these are easier to take apart than others. So I'm going to chip away at that and then I'll bring you back once I've got it open. Okay, I got most of the stuff peeled off of here and it's already getting ready to pop out here. So let's see if we can see inside of here and I can kind of show you a little bit more. Oh, yeah, you can see why this thing's probably not working. It's all full of corrosion. So there's the big electromagnet. And there is the uh, circuit that should close like that. So what we're gonna have to do here is we're gonna spray some contact cleaner in here, some WD-40, something like that, and see if we can't clean this up. And then uh, go test it to see if it works. I've had fair success getting these things working again after they uh, after they fail. So we'll clean it up a little bit and see what happens. Okay, I used some, actually just used a brake parts cleaner. Sprayed that thing out, hit it with some compressed air. Got most of it, was like some gunk and stuff in there. Probably, well, you can see inside of here. Water got in there, got a little bit of corrosion. Let's go see if it works. Ah, eyes got to adjust. Hopefully the camera's adjusting. And put you in the holder here. Sorry about this. Here, let's see if we can install this. Close that way. And then turn the key on. Can you see that thing? Let's see if we can zoom you in there. There you go. All right. Oh, 
Holy smoke. Did you see the uh, contact closing on there? I don't know how well I can do this. The uh, brake light switch works again now. So let me see if I can get you here and you can see the contact closing on there because it's kind of kind of interesting how it works. At least it is to me. I'm hoping if you're watching this that it's interesting to you. Okay, here we go. Ready? See that? Now it's closing, but we're not it's turning over, but yeah, now it's not even closing. So I think if I clean it a little bit more, it will work. But there you have it. Okay, after we tested it a couple times, you know, it, uh, it does work. I uh, applied some dielectric grease inside and then used some gasket sealer, put it back in there, sealed it up, so we'll let that sit. Carburetor's still cooking. Um, I've ran it probably four cycles, so this will probably be the last one. I've already taken some of the bits and pieces out, and cleaning them up. We'll assemble that, put this back on, and see if we can't get this thing to start. Okay, and uh, clean carburetor's installed. Got the throttle cable installed. I drained the gas out of this and filled it with fresh fuel. As you can see, I got the air filter installed and our remanufactured, not really remanufactured, but. So close. just getting fuel from here into the uh, carburetor, at least that's what I'm hoping. We're almost ready to go. close. Now let's start our cool down a little bit and we'll give it a little uh, touch of the magic. Starty juice here. If that helps any. That's better. Sounds like it's idling okay. It's revving up through the RPMs. We'll put the air filter on it and uh, we'll see how she runs. I ended up uh, repositioning the carburetor. It wasn't quite sealed on the uh, 
intake boot. So we will Working okay. I think I'm gonna put all this stuff on it here and uh, take it up and down the driveway a couple times. Check the tire pressure and all that stuff too. Let's see what happens here. Running. Okay, it works obviously. It ain't much fun to ride. It's uh, got no power and it's kind of shaky, but I guess it's kind of fun to ride. You don't want to go too fast on it. It's a little round town machine, but starts, runs, drives, stops, all that stuff. Horn works, uh, tail light works if it had a bulb, brake light works if it had a bulb, and I don't know about the headlight, but I know that the bulb is blown out on it, but I never tested the headlight. But we got it running for a little bit of time. Didn't buy any parts. I always like that. I get it going for, for nothing in parts. So if you're liking what I'm putting out here, give me that thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I appreciate all of that. And thank you very much for watching. Get out there and find your adventure. Adios.